Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Growing spiritually requires maturity. Israelites, when you ask the Most High to take you to the next level, or you want to build an intimate relationship with the Most High, understand with growth comes trials. In order for a person to change, you have to go through trials of all sorts. When you go through trials, you gain experience. Through the experience, you grow and mature. For example, before anyone can be a leader, he or she must be properly trained before they can lead. If you have an inexperienced leader, a business, household, or a ministry will fail through their lack of experience and maturity. An inexperienced leader will run a business to the ground, tear a family apart, and mislead the people who follow their ministry. If the Most High called you to lead, or even if you're not anointed to lead, understand that the Most High will place you in trials to tame your flesh and ego. Because you are representing the Most High, Yah will not allow you to disgrace His name. Let me elaborate. Let's say you and your friend commit the same sin. You are anointed by the Most High to lead and your friend is not. The Most High will judge you quicker and harsher than the friend. The reason your punishment is harsh and swift, you should have known better. With an anointing from the Most High comes the power to influence. If the Most High do not correct the error, it gives the kingdom of darkness an opportunity to interfere with your destiny. Remember, the kingdom of darkness is seeking to establish a covenant with you. If you accept their temptation, then a covenant was established. Through the covenant, you give the kingdom of darkness permission to oppress you, as well as take over your anointing and leadership. Yah wants you to recognize the sin and repent quickly. Therefore, He correct you swiftly. The Most High wants you to understand that as a leader, you cannot give Satan any opportunity. In addition, you are placed in a position of influence. What you do will inspire others to follow your example. Your friend will be judged, but nothing like what will happen to you. Israelites, through negative leadership set by our nation's leaders, caused the Most High to divide our nation into two kingdoms. King Solomon's sin of idolatry brought forth the division. The scriptures reveal leaders, teachers and pastors will be judged harsher than anybody else will. My brethren, be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. If you are called to be a leader, do not play with your anointing. Leaders are not the only group of people that will be placed in trials to graduate to the next stage. Everyone who seeks the Most High and wants to go deeper will have to go through this process. King David, before he became the great king he is known to be, David had one of the lowest job an Israelite can have in those days. He was a shepherd. Not only did David had a low-class job, his family did not respect him. When Samuel came to anoint Israel's next king, David's family did not even consider him. They held the anointing ceremony without him. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, but we will not sit down till he come hither. In most people's perspective, David's job as a shepherd had no influence on his journey to become a great king. It depends on how you're looking at the situation. You have to use discernment. Although being a shepherd is a low-class job back in those days, the Most High was using David's job as a shepherd to train him on how to be a leader and a warrior. The Most High can use anything to train you. The sheep would follow David's instructions. David guide the herd wherever they needed to go. He took care of the livestock. If one went missing or an animal attacked, he was not afraid to fight the wild animal to rescue the sheep. The scriptures reveal to us how David would kill lions and bears with his bare hands. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. As a leader, you have to be fearless and display strong leadership skills to win the people's trust. All the skills David learned tending his father's sheep, he need those skills to lead. 
Part of a leader's role is to guide and instruct the people on your team to better your business, household, ministry, or whatever you are ahead of. You must protect and provide for those under you. All of this David did while tending his father's sheep. Another training David received from his job as a shepherd, he can relate to other people who have been treated poorly. David's family thought so low of him that they believed he was incapable of leading a nation, nor would the Most High choose him to be king. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Then David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? David's family lack of faith in him and their rejection toward David, the Most High used their insult to humble David and to keep him from becoming proud. Anyone who can kill a lion with his bare hand, that is very impressive. However, David knew to give the Most High the glory. It was the Most High fighting the lion. Through the lack of support David received from his family, he will know what it feels like to be at the bottom and mistreated. When he becomes king, he can better sympathize with his people. In addition, he will be able to make decisions that will make his people submit to him as their leader. David is known to be a man of war. I am sure wrestling with lions helped develop his skills to be a fearless warrior. Israelites, when you look at your present situation, do not despise humble beginnings. You never know how the Most High is using your present situation to train you to become what he ordained you to be. For who hath despised the day of small things? But they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. You may not have the job you want right now or where you would like to be on your journey with the Most High. Ask the Most High what do He wants you to learn in your current situation while you are on your way to the next stage. Before the Most High take you to the next level, He will test you to show you what's in your heart. The Most High already know what you're capable of. Yah tests you so that you would know what is in your heart. All of us believe we would do the right thing when the time comes to reveal our truth. Many of us are shocked by the outcome because we believe we would do the right thing. We never thought we would react the way we do. Remember, Peter said to Yahshua that he would die for him and stand by him no matter what. When the time came for Peter to display the boldness he proclaimed to have, he failed miserably. Instead of standing by the Messiah as he said he would do, he denied him. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, Yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this night, before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. You may have the best intentions in dealing with the situation, but you do not know what's in your heart until the Most High reveal it to you. When I was terminated from my job through injustice, I did not know I was capable in handling the situation the way I did. I kept a level head and stayed professional. I did not seek revenge through the flesh. I did not want to physically fight the perpetrator. Instead, I asked the Most High to plead my case. Israelites, I was surprised on how I handled the injustice. If it were not for the training received from the Most High, I probably would have reacted in another way. You never know until the Most High show you the real you. Israelites, you must know that when you ask the Most High to teach you his ways, he will chastise you. It is a part of the process. The Most High must correct you when you are out of order. Most people mistake the Most High's discipline for an attack from the kingdom of darkness. The scriptures reveal to us that the Most High chastised the ones he loved. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Most Israelites believe if they repent and pray, that is all that it takes to reverse the consequences of their sins. The scripture said the wages of sin is death. 
Since Yahshua died, you do not die when you sin. When you repent, it gives the Most High room to heal you. In addition, the Most High will discipline you just as your earthly parents discipline their children. The Most High is our Father. If He do not discipline you, then you do not belong to Him. If He did not care for you, He would allow the kingdom of darkness to have their way with you. Whom the Lord loveth, He correcteth, even as a father the son in whom He delighteth. But if He be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Israelites, when you profess and ask the Most High to teach you his ways and you want to mature and elevate in your spiritual journey, trials and correction is a part of the process when you seek to go deeper with the Most High. Israelites, you have to differentiate between the Most High's correction and an evil attack by the kingdom of darkness. When the Most High discipline you, you will know because it does not feel good and he makes it known. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. When the kingdom of darkness attack you, it is usually through temptation, because they are always seeking a covenant. The Most High would never tempt us. The scripture said the Most High do not tempt us. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. The kingdom of darkness is always seeking a covenant. To help you better understand when an attack is from the kingdom of darkness, Satan wants to draw you away from the Most High. He wants you to break the statutes and commandments of the Most High. For example, when Satan led King David to number the people by taking a census, that was not of the Most High. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. That was an attack against the Israelites to get them to sin against the Most High. When King David sinned by killing Uriah and taking his wife, the Most High allowed the child born to David and Bathsheba to die. That was disciplined by the Most High. The word of the Most High said no correction is joyful but painful. In addition, the Most High chastened us to save our lives. When you ask the Most High to teach you his statutes and commandments, the Most High will place you in situations that require total dependence on him. Remember, it is the Most High that does the good work in us. If you rely on yourself or an idol, you cancel Yah's assistance in your spiritual growth. Remember, the Most High would not share His glory with anyone. The reason you would have to become completely dependent on Yah, that is how you will be able to see His sovereignty. You will be able to see how the Most High moved mountains on your behalf. Once you pass the test, the Most High will begin to transition you to the next phase. Transitioning is the Most High's way of taking you deeper and setting you up to fulfill your destiny. Transitioning is a very important step. This is the time where things can go well or bad. During the transition, your life will appear to be upside down. For example, when I lost my job, the Most High was transitioning me to something better. Before I got to what He was preparing for me, the Most High allowed me to lose the job to get me to depend on Him to take me where He wants me to go. If you're not careful, the spirit of fear will cause you to miss where the Most High wants to take you. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness to bombard you with negativity during the transitioning phase. Despite the direction of your situation appear to you, the Most High is always in control. Understand transitioning is a time for you to apply everything the Most High has been teaching you to take you to the next level. When your life appear to be falling apart, utilize the lessons the Most High taught you to pass the test. For example, a lot of you have been rebuking your dreams and now the kingdom of darkness is fighting back by causing you to forget your dreams. Now would be the perfect opportunity to apply what you have been learning about the spirit realm. Identify the spirit, then attack the spirit causing you to forget your dreams. How do you do that? Interacting with the Holy Spirit in prayer and fasting. Do not become comfortable in the transitioning phase. In addition, do not make the transitioning phase permanent. The length of your transition is up to you. If you refuse to trust the Most High, then this would delay your transition. If you quit because you do not understand what is happening, this will also delay your arrival to destiny. Once the transition is complete, then you can celebrate your accomplishment by giving Yah the glory. The Most High is not going to take you from a babe to destiny overnight. It will take time. David was a teenager when the Most High anointed him to be king over Israel. Israelites, David did not become king over Israel until he was 30 years old. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. 
In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. Between the time David was anointed to be king and when he became a king, the Most High was working on his character, training him to be the leader he wanted David to be. Before David became king over the entire 12 tribes of Israel, the Most High made David king over his tribe, Judah, first. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh Gilead were they that buried Saul. Israelites, depending on how deep you want to go with the Most High will determine the intensity of your training. Do not mistake those trials for persecution from the kingdom of darkness. Before Job graduated to the next level, he was placing severe emotional and physical trauma. As he continued to seek his Elohim, he received the exceedingly above and beyond what he could ever imagine. Israelites, when you say things like, I want to build a strong relationship with the Most High, I want to know how to serve the Most High in the spirit and in the truth, I want to follow his statutes and commandments, you must understand what you're asking for. In order for you to graduate and draw near to the Most High, Yah has to train and discipline you first. Many Israelites are not disciplined. Most people believe as long as they pray and fast, whatever they ask, they would receive. When the Most High is preparing you to receive, many Israelites turn away and quit because the trials are too intense. If you cannot handle the correction from the Most High, then you are not ready for what you're asking for. Leadership in the Israelite community is lacking. Everyone wants to be a leader, but no one wants to endure the training from the Most High. You cannot say you want to grow and go deeper and not allow the Most High to transform you. King David allowed the Most High to take him from being a shepherd to a king. Israelites, you must submit to the Most High and allow Him to train you to get you to where you want to be spiritually. Most Israelites do not understand when you ask the Most High to increase your understanding in His words or the laws. In the spiritual language, you're asking the Most High to discipline you. In order for you to grow, you have to go through trials. That is how you mature. Some of the trials you believe is persecution from the kingdom of darkness are actually chastisement from the Most High. The scripture said to count it all joy when you experience trials of all sorts. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Not all trials are negative. Some are to elevate you, correct you, and deepening your relationship with the Most High. Israelites, you must understand and know how your Elohim operate. Understand the Most High has to test, discipline, and place you in adverse circumstances to strengthen your relationship with Him, as well as to elevate you. When your time comes to receive those training, do not despise it, but learn from it so you can triumph and over it and walk in your destiny. Always be prepared for what you're asking the Most High to do for you. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him.